What is going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes where today we are on our 25th in-depth review and due to popular demand we are just going to finish off the clone faction and continue on with the phase one clone sergeant. A lot of you guys saw him get some great damage in the heroic AAT raid and you guys want to know more about him in general. Today we will be seeing some gameplay I captured while at Electronic Arts as well as a lot of games play provided by Mick Mold 2 who has a great YouTube channel with a lot of clone content and he also asked me if I can show you this website he made for clones. So if you want some more details on clones and a nice article to read, definitely check this out. This guy knows his stuff and definitely check out his YouTube channel as well. So getting on to today's story, let's go ahead and pull up the Hall of Fame and see what we did last time. In our last review, we looked at Echo and placed him in the master category. He was a character that's overshadowed by B2 but provides a lot of great support options. Where is the clone sergeant going to fall today and what does he offer? We don't see him all that much. He's a hard character to farm but when in the right lineup, oh boy, he can do quite a lot of work. Normally, we start off these reviews by looking at the history of the character, but this is one of those generic characters that does not really have a particular history, but his purpose in the clone army is to suppress the enemy attack and allow his clones to go in and do some big damage. But because of no real history, we can go right into how we unlock this character. And if you guys remember from way, way back when, when you first started, or this might be the first time you're seeing this, you can can get the clone sergeant at the very beginning of your journey in the game when you first start the game you get the jedi counselor and the clone sergeant and this is a great character to start learning some very basic mechanics in the game so he does a great job but to star him up he's actually a lot harder to get to seven stars you have two hard dark side battles to participate in and you have one hard light side battle to participate in so part of the reason why we don't see him be all that widespread because he's not in cantina or any other shipments but you also can get him in the chromium packs if you want to spend the money and you do get him quite frequently seeing that this is a pretty hard character to farm you probably want to know what are the pros the cons what is he okay at so let's go ahead and check all of that stuff out before we consider mods abilities leaders all that great stuff and we go right into the pros the first pro we have to mention is maximum basic damage. The average amount of maximum basic damage in this game is 4,251, and Clone Sergeant is definitely slightly above that at 4,508, putting him at number 32 in this category. And not too much more stuff in here. We have armor, where he is seen as number 41. The average is 227 for armor, and the Clone Sergeant, again, slightly above this at 232, which makes him number 41 there. So he will be able to reduce oncoming damage a lot better than some average characters out there and the last thing in this category is health steal he has 10% health steal and as you guys know if you can regenerate health on your own that is always a good thing in my book if you guys know the past three clone reviews we've had a bad streak of no averages but the clone sergeant is breaking that streak making life easier on Chewbacca so thank goodness for clone sergeant and the first thing we see is that he is number 51 in health now the average is 19,166 and the clone sergeant is at 16,983 the reason why this is in the average because the median of this game is centered around 17,000 roughly so this puts him at number 51 in health so definitely okay in this category and the second thing in terms of aoe or area of effect he has number 21 out of 36 of characters who can use aoe abilities the average is 2,992, and the Clone Sergeant is just a tad below this at 2,727, so not too far off the average there. So we couldn't avoid it forever, but now it's time to get to the stuff that Chewbacca wants to cry about. But don't worry, it's not as hard as the last three videos. We see in terms of speed, he has number 93. Ouch! The average amount of speed in this game is 127, and the Clone Sergeant is at 107, putting him in roughly that bottom 10% right there. Protection, the story is not as bad, but still definitely in the con section. The average is 19,617, and the Clone Sergeant has 15,976, which puts him below both the average and the median, where he's number 67, 
putting him in that bottom 50% range. Potency, not a good story here, and he needs some potency to remove turn meter. We know that the average and medium is 30%, and the clone sergeant is at 18%. So number 84 in this category, putting him in the bottom 20%. So for moving turn meter is your main goal, you might want to bump up that potency just a little bit more so you can be on a constant basis. And lastly, armor penetration, we are number 78 here. The average is 53, and clone sergeant is at 33, which just means he will get his damage reduced a bit more when trying to attack someone on average. Now it is time to talk about his kit, and it's still a very basic Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes kit and hasn't evolved too much, but it does offer quite a lot of important things. The first is the Z6 Rotary Blasters. This is his basic attack, which deals physical damage to a target enemy and gains 50% turn meter upon a critical hit, which does about 4080 to 4508 before considering mods, critical damage, and all that stuff. So this is kind of a mini HK47 lead for himself, and this helps a a lot with his speed issues kind of like that roller coaster metaphor we had for commander cody once he makes his first critical damage hit the ball starts rolling and he attacks a lot more frequently and this works splendidly well under a commander cody zeta lead up next we have suppressive fire this is his mass dealing attack where he deals physical damage to all enemies and removes 50 percent turn meter and this does about 2469 to 2727 before everything else is considered so this is a very basic aoe but it's actually Actually pretty deadly when used correctly removing 50% turn meter is huge and not many characters can do that and do it to everyone helps individuals like himself as well because he's a very slow guy so if you remove turn meter he can go ahead and get ahead of the race a little bit you definitely want to bump up your potency just a little bit more just to make sure this sticks plenty of times during your arena battles and lastly we have concentrated fire this is his unique ability where the clone sergeant gains 4.5 percent critical chance for each living clone ally. In addition, he has plus 10% critical damage and offense up for two turns whenever he scores a critical hit. So very deadly in a clone lineup. I'm serious about this. It's pretty darn deadly. Under a Commander Cody Zeta lead, this is also pretty deadly. He gains 22.5% critical chance when all clones are around him, and then he gains an additional 30% critical chance when under a Cody lead, and then he also has a base critical chance at around 40% before you do anything on his own. So when adding being in a clone squad under a Cody lead and his base 40% critical chance, this means he has a 92.5% chance to apply critical damage. Pretty darn high. That's why you want to use him with clones, but more on this later. Let's go ahead and talk about our gear now and first off let's get to the raid gear the average amount of raid gear in this game is three pieces and the clone sergeant needs four pieces of raid gear with the first being at gear eight and then one being needed for each gear level from nine to eleven and on gear levels eight nine and ten he will need one mark five fusion furnaces in each one of those gear levels and then once he's at gear eleven he will need one mark seven nubian scanner Time to put some sparkle in our eyes and look at the gold gear. The average is 200 pieces and the clone sergeant is in the second highest group, which is 330 pieces. The first highest group is 440 pieces, so definitely up there in terms of gold gear requirements. And he will need two Mark VIII biotech implants to get from gear 10 to gear 11. And then he will need another piece once at gear 11. Now the stuff you'd much rather eat nails over doing this, and that is the purple gear. The average amount needed is 1,110, and the clone sergeant needs 1,160, only being slightly above average here, and also that means he's number 41 in purple gear requirements. And he's one of the few that actually prefers a lot of green and blue gear from gear 7 to gear 9. It's actually quite interesting. But he's not needing all that much of one piece. Yeah, he will need Mark VI Hypo Syringes, but most of those go to the raid gear, so you don't have to worry too much outside of that. Blue, green, and white gear. He is actually way, way below average on green and blue, and he's right on average for white essentially so you'll actually have a pretty easy time gearing up up until about 9 10 it starts getting a bit more difficult finally it is time to get to the subjective part of the review where i give you tips recommendations thoughts yoda's checklist mod recommendations and we first start off with my thoughts on this character
The Clone Sergeant is a fantastic beginner character to kind of introduce you to the mechanics of AoE and just the game in general. But within your first few weeks, once you start starring up characters, you start unlocking more people, you start to replace him with someone else because he is not a flexible character that can work in any type of lineup. He really relies on his fellow clone troopers. When he's in a full clone squad, he is absolutely amazing and super deadly in arena and just spectacular in the AAT raid. He removes a lot of turn meter and gains a lot of turn meter because of his basics, so he's kind of controlling that roller coaster. Once he gets that first critical damage attack in, he is speeding up the process a lot faster. When under a Commander Cody Zeta lead, he will be having a lot of critical chance opportunities. So he will be gaining turn meter a lot, and more turn meter means more attacks and more damage. And he hits quite hard on his basic when considering critical damage will be happening quite frequently. He can hit around the 10,000 mark, sometimes more on his basic when you consider critical damage and gaining offense up as well as the 10% critical damage bonus he gains from his unique but as I said outside of that clone squad he does not offer much that makes him flexible and cross meta he kind of reminds me of Ahsoka Tano where he requires a few things to become a master but without that outside assistance he is not offering too much no clones means he'll be slacking a lot, but he will be able to apply critical damage somewhat often due to his naturally high percentage. Another thing to consider is that he is a very tough character to farm. You won't be getting this guy in two weeks unless you're spending money. So if you are planning on getting him, definitely buckle down because you will have a roller coaster of your own to farm this character all the way. But once you finally get your clone team set up, you definitely want to try to add him to your squad because he will just dominate the AAT raid and arena so being the brave soul that you are you're probably still thinking about maybe farming this character well if you are using him you need to know who his mortal enemies are and there aren't any anti-clone synergy as of now but debuffs like shock and daze are deadly to prevent him from gaining turn meter and gaining the offense up buffs stun and ability block also deadly because if he's not using his aoe he's not removing turn meter critical hit immunity characters completely remove almost all of his viability not even kidding there and other things like offense down makes him hit a lot less which means he loses part of the reason of being an attacker but what about his best friends who is he hanging out with after a tough day on the battlefield and for sure all of the clones he is amazing with all the clones some more clones the better anakin for more damage General Kenobi is a fantastic leader for clones, as many of you guys know from my previous reviews. Plo Koon, a not too popular character, but on paper, yeah, he's a decent friend, but probably not one that he'll be sending cat pictures too often. He also works great in lineups that are around turn meter removal, so if you want to remove lots of turn meter over and over again, hey, this guy might help you out. If you aren't running a full clone lineup, Captain Phasma is great to ensure he is always gaining those bonuses that rely on critical damage. So you know his mortal enemies, his best friends, you still want to use them, you need to know his mods. And for sure, I there's no argument here, you really want critical chance and critical damage mods. More so critical damage because as I said, he already has a pretty high base critical chance. So if you just bump that up to 52%, you're pretty much all set to be at 100% critical chance. The critical damage mod sets just means you're just turning out more damage onto your enemies. Other options for mod sets are like potency, if you want to make sure you're removing turn meter more often you could use health not as helpful as the other two and you also could use speed mod sets if you want to make him slightly faster but i don't think that's all too necessary seeing that he gains a lot of turn meter on his own in terms of primary and secondary mods, speed, hey, that's definitely all right. You always want more speed as possible. But once you start getting that roller coaster going, speed is not going to matter all too much, but that definitely could be a high priority somewhere. But for sure, get some more critical damage mods. Make sure you get some potency in there to remove some turn meter if you can. And you don't have to worry too much about getting critical chance in there since he already has a high base amount. You probably might get to that 52% quite easily and when you're using him for arena the aat raid pretty much this is what you want to use it's not like rex where you need to switch your mods around depending on what you're doing this guy is all about damage output and we will talk about that soon but for sure this is probably the best way to go ahead and mod that up now one of my favorite part of the reviews we look at yoda's do or do not checklist and we quickly go ahead check out many aspects of the game and see if they are a viable character and we start off with arena now if you're running a clone squad 1000% do if you are just starting off in this game getting your baby steps going he is definitely great 
Galactic War is definitely great. Light side battles, definitely yes. He's pretty great for that. Removing turn meter, all that stuff is absolutely great. Cantina battles, just like light side battles, also viable in there. So let's go ahead and say do. For mod challenges, there is nothing clone specific. So I will say do not just because there's nothing categorically for them. But you could use them for the catch all one, which is for health mods. Ships, actually, yeah, go ahead and toss in a do. So you will have viability on the ground and in the sky. And he is a fairly decent ship in the game as well. Rancor Raid. I'll say this slightly, not the most needed characters. I will say do, mainly because once you knock down the door for the Rancor Raid, he can attack quite a lot and put out some good damage, but definitely not a must-have for sure. AAT Raid. 100% do. If you saw my clone video from a while ago where we showcased the clones in the AAT raid, you will see that he was the MVP in terms of damage. So definitely a great character if you want to be the guy in your guild to help push through phase two and phase four. And now my friends, our journey has led us to this point where we have to go ahead and pull up the hall of fame and see where we are going to place the clone sergeant and just a reminder when we rank characters we look at just the character themselves without the outside assistance to keep things constant and to help you know who is a great character even without the help of other people and with that in mind let's go ahead and get to the final verdict from grandmaster to youngling we are going to place the clone sergeant phase one in the night status so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this review and the next review will be on five so we can conclude all the clones in that faction. But feel free to let me know what the next faction should be after I finish up fives or just feel free to toss in the vote for five so I can feature your comment in the next video. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to drop me a like, comment down below and subscribe for more Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes content. And we will talk again soon. Peace out. Peace out.